Hello and welcome to this webinar on order of gifting. When dealing with clients with substantial estates, it will not always be possible to fully meet their objectives with a single solution. Instead, it may be more appropriate for the client to combine outright gifts with trusts and even with exempt transfers. In such cases, it will be important to consider the best structural order for the planning. To this end, it should be noted that the nil rate band available to trustees of any given discretionary trust is reduced by the cumulative total of chargeable transfers made by the set law in the seven year period prior to him creating the trust. So, for example, if Bob created a loan trust today, having created a discretionary based gift trust in the sum of 250,000 four years ago, the nil rate band available to the trustees of the loan trust for the purposes of calculating future inheritance tax periodic and exit charges will be reduced by £250,000 to just £75,000. While this will clearly need to be borne in mind when recommending more than one discretionary based trust, it will also be important to avoid making potentially exempt transfers, which could become chargeable retrospectively in the event of the set laws failing to survive them by seven years before setting up any sort of discretionary trust. This will be especially important where the client is older or in ill health and there is a greater risk that he will not outlive the pet. Take for example the following scenario. Graham, aged 79, has an estate of 2.2 million and wishes to carry out some inheritance tax planning with a cash sum of 250,000. He tells you that three years ago, he gave a property worth 175,000 to his son, Peter but that he's made no further gifts other than to make regular use of his annual exemption. As Graham requires income from his investment and is in reasonable health for his age, a discounted gift trust arrangement is recommended. Because Graham's earlier gift was potentially exempt, he has a full nil rate band available to him when he sets up his discounted gift trust and so no lifetime charge to inheritance tax will arise when he makes his discounted gift of £150,000 on the 1st of November 2020. Unfortunately, Graham dies three years after establishing his discounted gift trust. The failed pet also having been made within the last seven years, becomes chargeable as a result of Graham's death. No tax is payable in respect of the failed pet or the later CLT as a result of Graham's death, as they are together covered by his nil rate band. However, look at what happens when the trust reaches its 10th anniversary on the 1st of November 2030. The discounted gift trust fund is now worth 340,000 and the nil rate band has gone up in value to 365,000 pounds. However, remember that this is just the starting point for calculating the nil rate band available to the trustees. The actual amount of nil rate band available to the trustees for the purposes of calculating the periodic charge must take into account the cumulative total of chargeable transfers made by the set law in the seven years before he created the trust. And when we now look back to see whether or not Graham made any chargeable transfers in the seven years before he created the DGT, we find the PET, which has failed to achieve exempt status and so has become chargeable retrospectively. The nil rate band available to the trustees must therefore be reduced by the value of the failed PET from 365,000 to 190,000. And a periodic charge of 9,000 pounds will therefore arise. Note that if the PET had been made after the DGT was created, the nil rate band available to the DGT at the anniversary date would have been the whole 365,000 and there would have therefore been no tax to pay. To avoid this type of scenario, 
the optimum order for inheritance tax efficiency would generally be first make your exempt gifts or set up plans that don't involve a gift such as a loan plan then make gifts to discretionary based trusts and finally make any outright gifts or gifts to trust that would qualify as potentially exempt transfers provided that this order is followed the death of the client within seven years of implementing the planning will not have any adverse effect on the nil rate band available to his trust for the purposes of calculating future periodic and IHT exit charges. Thank you for listening.